Hey everyone, it's your boy, and if you're like me and spend too much time on Twitter and follow certain accounts, like the folks over at the Digital Blackface podcast, Poe and Jay, you may have come across them retweeting in horror about a certain group of people and how Twitter seems to be unable or unwilling to do anything about them, specifically the more extreme and harmful ones. You will also have seen the likes of Blair White and Ready to Glare also discuss these people in their videos. I am, of course, talking about maps. No, not that thing behind Paul Joseph Watson. Maps. Minor attracted persons. Or paedophiles. They're paedophiles. That's what they are. There goes the ad revenue on this video. So yes, maps are paedophiles. But why do they refer to themselves as maps? Well, to play devil's advocate, they prefer to call themselves this because paedophile would be considered a slur. And minor attracted person is much more preferable. Not only that, the term paedophile carries connotations and baggage that those non-offending maps or paedophiles would rather not deal with. But what it really is, is a euphemism that ja But what it really is, is a euphemism that George Carlin would call it. A politically correct umbrella term to describe themselves so they can seem more palatable to normal people. It's an umbrella term because it covers not just paedophilia, which is usually defined as a person attracted to prepubescent children under the age of 10, but it also covers hebophilia, which is the attraction towards pubescent and early adolescent children, which is 11 to 14, and aphebophilia, which is an attraction to late adolescence, which is 15 to 19 years of age. Now, that latter term also includes ages which are generally considered the age of consent in many countries. I'm talking, of course, the ages of 16 to roughly 19 years of age. So, depending on where you live, for example, my country, which is 16, these could be considered minors or fully consenting individuals. Although this is a very technical and slightly confusing definition in common parlance, MAP is usually used to refer to paedophiles and those who are attracted to people under the age of consent, specifically young children. Just like the term paedophile, which is also used to blanket call everybody who is attracted to minors, even if those said minors might not necessarily be minors in other countries. The term has these definitions and it has another usage besides trying to appear more palatable to a mainstream audience. It is also used to try and piggyback off of the LGBT community. Now this story is nothing new. Organisations that claim to fight on behalf of paedophile rights, such as Nambler, have long tried to infiltrate and co-opt at first to the GLB, then later on the LGBT movement and communities since at least the late 60s and early 70s. And this latest attempt by rebranding themselves as maps is just another attempt at infiltration. And this is why we should stop calling maps paedophiles. I will be repeating what I have said slightly, but do bear with me as I explain why we should not call these people maps. First, as already stated, it is a politically correct euphemism designed to be palatable to a mainstream audience. It's also incredibly disingenuous and deceptive because the term also counts aphebophiles as maps. But of course, in that part of the term, that can include people who are generally legally allowed to copulate, barring some Romeo and Juliet law or what have you. The other people, the 15 year olds, not so much. In my opinion, this is an attempt to try and make out that maps really are just like any other person. They can like adults and people who are capable of consenting just like any normal person can. So why the rejection? It's a rather poor attempt to make somebody think, well, if a map can fall in love with an 18 and 19 year old person, which is very common for normal human beings who have normal sexual desires, then surely 16 year olds, who one can consider pretty mature enough to have sex, then through the process of the slippery slope, you could say, they try and make even having sex with kids seem perfectly normal. Thankfully, the vast majority of regular people can see through this obvious attempt at deception, at least when it comes to young girls. In our society, it is completely unacceptable to statutorily rape or molest any girl. If a man does it especially, it's very bad. Unfortunately, the pedos may have better luck trying to persuade regular people that having sex with teenage boys is more acceptable, at least if it's a female pedo attempting it. Pederasty is thankfully a taboo subject in the West and totally illegal, but as you may have encountered in many a comment section, or even in real life, people don't tend to believe older women can rape younger boys. Hell, they don't think women can rape at all. Which is very worrying because despite the law clearly jailing these women, not to the same extent as a man, it provides in my opinion a backdoor access for pedo groups to spread their propaganda. So on that front, 
the term should be opposed outright. The second is, once again, that it is used to try and co-opt the LGBT community and its political activist wings. Now, I have nothing against gays, lesbians, bisexuals, or even transgender people as groups or individuals. Live and let live. I'm a classical liberal, as you know. But I despise their left-wing activist groups, especially the trans activists. They are particularly very good at leftist subversion and getting what they want in society. The last thing we need is pedos being able to co-opt these groups and use them to try and make paedophilia legal in the West. As you may have seen in some high profile articles from a few years ago, the left is particularly susceptible to treating paedophilia with kid gloves. Whether this comes from a desire to simply understand the issue or they really do think it is some kind of civil rights thing, I can't say. But the more than flattering depictions and the aforementioned total lack of action from the progressive dominated Twitter staff to do anything about them speaks volumes. They are susceptible to infiltration and also enjoy politically correct language games. The pedos know this and could totally use this word to become part of the LGBT community, as they have tried to do so for many years. But not only that, it doesn't make sense from a logical perspective. If you are transgender and watch me, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but I reject paedophiles as being considered part of the gay community as much as I do transgender people and here's why. Please do bear with me. It has nothing to do with sexuality, at least not in the way that they would like you to think it does. Being a paedophile is not a different sexuality from being gay, straight, bi or even pansexual. Paedophiles are still gay, straight or bi, etc. They just like young children. The children are still boys and girls. The paedophiles either like boys, or they like girls, or they like both. It's not a sexuality, it's a fetish. Just like how transgender people are in fact not a sexuality at all, but just a different category altogether. Not a separate gender or sex, but a different expression, one could say. Transgender people transition from one to the other, or at least as well as modern medicine can allow them to. Gender dysphoria is not a sexuality, it's a mental health issue, and transgender people still consider themselves gay or straight or lesbian or bi or whatever. Which, depending on your opinion, paedophilia could also be considered a mental health issue. So this is another reason. Again, I'm not trying to morally compare the two and say they're the same, I'm just saying I reject them on the same reasons that they're not sexualities. That's what I'm trying to say. Hope you understand, guys. Other than those reasons, I can't really think of anything else. I've expanded on what I have said before, only to reiterate that we should continue to call these people paedophiles and not to flatter them and call them maps. I don't think we should even call non-offending paedophiles maps. Again, it's sugarcoating and hiding what they really are. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't try to find a way to fix these obvious mental deficiencies that these people have. I know there are paedophiles that have incredible levels of self-loathing due to this, which is why research should be encouraged on it to either find ways of them coping with it, curing them or whatever. I think those who seek help should of course be granted it. Would you reject someone who had feelings of murderous rage from seeking help? But if they break the law, if they try to excuse their own or others' behaviours and try to make child exploitation and molestation legal, they should be punished. If they try to hurt children or spread child pornography, they should be punished to the fullest extent of the law, male or female perpetrators. And as small as it seems, continuing to call a spade a spade is going to help a long way in making sure children are safe in our society. So that's all I have time for today. Make sure to like and share the video, subscribe to my channel, maybe donate to my Patreon and subscribe to that and until next time I will see you all later.